been suspected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no. Tough. They suck. I've been telling you all season, They've Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jalen Carter? Like, they shit on you. They shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jalen Carter, like they shit on you. Here we go. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I mm. Oh boy. Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Oh my goodness, what a week. This is th uh, Thirsty Thursday. And you know you're thirsting for the Dallas Cowboys versus the Commanders with the left hand up and we know they stink. Um, one thing, uh, we, we're getting into Dan Quinn and something that I think may be the best news that we have heard about Dan Quinn. But before I do that, I want to clarify something because, you know, I, I do the best I can. Yesterday, after I got back home from working on the Red Brick House, I went through and I was going through all my emails and stuff because we're getting ready for the tailgate on Sunday. Um, there are still tickets available, not guaranteeing if they're exactly in that same, they're in that same section, but they may not be quite exact placement of it. But, um, the, you can definitely be there at the game where it's kind of crazy because uh, I had been watching the long rain forecast from the first day about two weeks ago that it came out. And originally it was looking like it was going to be raining and then it could be rain and snow mixture and stuff like that. And there's a big snowstorm that's headed for the East Coast. Originally it was going to be Saturday into Sunday. Um, it looks like it's going to be Saturday. So uh, because of that, I'm going to start barbecuing the pulled pork tomorrow so that way i'm not outside because here we're going to get about an inch rain but for sunday last year remember it was kind of windy it was really windy this year it's five to ten mile an hour winds which is light and a high temperature of 47 is what they're calling for partly cloudy so the weather it's going to be wet the day before but the cane it's going to be nice you i, I don't know you may want to bring dress warm still because it is a 425 kickoff. Um, but but what I wanted to say is, there is, uh, Mark Holmes is me, of course, okay? And my channel is not like any other channel that's out there, okay? People will talk about how many videos I do a day because this is literally me obsessed with the Dallas Cowboys. I know it's hard to believe that one, I'm superstitious because I have a voodoo doll, and two, that I am um, obsessed with the Cowboys. I'm obsessed with football. I love football. Football, from playing football, taught me so much about life. It's got good, it's got bad, but I can relate almost everything that I'm doing in life to something that I learned from football. It's the truth. And that's why I'm constantly talking about it. I'm, and I'm a multitasker and I'm a bit crazy that I have to have a couple of things going on at the same time, which is why you'll see me doing all kinds of stuff and talking about football because I am crazy. Just letting you know. If you haven't discovered that yet, it's a good kind of crazy. It's not, ah, give me a knife crazy. No, it's not that kind of crazy. It's the good kind of crazy, the kind that's going to do everything he can to make you have a good time. And that's where you'll see it on the tailgate this weekend. All right, be that at all as it may. My fireside chat, you know, I get up here first thing in the morning because it's like, what happened with the Cowboys and everything else? I get my coffee on, start my day. First thing I do is talk about the Cowboys, start my day. The last thing I do is my fireside chat. So somebody busted me out and they said, you know, you're sitting there talking about, you know, that, that red brick house shit and all that. And I don't come here for for that. I come here from Cowboys News. Understand, if you're only there for just Cowboys News, then don't do the fireside chat. That's not like all the other videos that I do all day. That is the end of the day where I recognize that that day is gone. It is another day in my rear view mirror. And at my age of 58, I don't know how many more I have in front of me. So it's my time to reflect on what I did at that day as uh, 
Was I a good citizen? Did I do everything I can to help other people? Did I do things to advance myself? And so on. So you're going to get a mix of Cowboys talk along with life. And if you would actually listen to the whole video about the hard work that went into the red brick house, I related that to what the Cowboys had been doing this season with the hard work of Dak Prescott having the field in his backyard, of Micah Parsons working with Wadsworth and never resting. Where you, you constantly see him putting in the hard work because in the end, everything you do in life is related to something else. It's like the knee bones connected to the elbow. and uh, I mean, the knee bones connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bones connected to the tush-push bone and, and, and so on. You know what I'm saying? In life, there are messages all around you, and you need to open up your mind to them. That's my point in all that. All right, so we got the tailgate on Sunday. We gonna eat. I've ordered three big six-foot subs. Three. Three. Three big sub rolls. We're gonna put barbecue on those things, man. We're gonna make a big burger sub on one of them. Man, we going to eat. We going to have Joe Boo wings. Got about 80 pounds of Joe Boo wings that we're going to have. We are going to feast. And we hopefully will see the Dallas Cowboys win the NFC East and be the number two seed going into the playoffs. That does not happen, in my mind, if they had not brought back Dan Quinn. Because, see, here's the thing about the Dallas Cowboys. You can talk about how Tony Romo was a failure and how Dak Prescott's been a failure, how the Dallas Cowboys have been a failure. But the thing about it is, is you have to be a team. I know everybody just wants to point the finger at the quarterback and say, you're winning a Super Bowl only because of one guy. But Tom Brady never won the Super Bowl with a defense that was worse than eighth in the NFL. That is a fact. It's a fact. There is no quarterback out there that has been on an ass-ass team that has won the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning didn't win the Super Bowl till later in his career. He did have, statistically, during the season, an ass-ass defense. But for whatever reason, they were able to turn it on to win that first playoff. They played lights out in the playoffs, after being like one of the worst defenses in football. But if they hadn't, they don't win that Super Bowl. Defense has been where we've been lacking. Even if Tony Romo and Des Bryant completed the catch-no-catch. No catch. With all the time that's left, are you telling me that Aaron Rodgers is not taking him down the field for the score with the defense we had? Seriously. Seriously. We wouldn't have won that game anyway. Dak Prescott's rookie year. We go down the field and get the lead. 53 seconds. We get the stop. We're going on to the NFC Championship game. Defense doesn't stop them. We go against the Lions. I mean, excuse me, the Rams. The Rams, Cowboys offense, gets hot, goes down and scores. All we need is the football back one more time. Fourth down and long. Jared Goff runs for the first down. All these losses that we have in the playoffs here, we get a stop. And I even go back to where people killed Dak Prescott. They killed Dak Prescott on the first San Francisco game. But we went out and scored. The offense was heating up. You could see we were moving the ball even with Dak Prescott running down there, but we ran out of time. If Randy Gregory doesn't tackle an offensive lineman and give him 15 yards and a first down, we get the ball back with more time. And I believe the Cowboys score and win the game. Defense matters. Roger Staubach is not winning the Super Bowls without the Doomsday defense. It's not. Troy Aikman is not winning the Super Bowls with the Doomsday 2 defense. Just not. 
And this is where we are. And Dan Quinn, you can see the difference of coaching because Dan Quinn took a defense that was historically bad from 2020 with mostly the same players and turned them around. Now, is it a big, bruising, run-stopping defense? No, but it's a defense that gets after the quarterback's ass. And I've played this video. I haven't played it in a long time. Dan Quinn. Let me play it. Oh, broke ass media. Haven't been here in a while. I got to be the cameraman, too. Because you know I'm cray cray. Yeah, we knew whatever conditions were going to come up tonight, we really, uh, the, one of the main things we want to do is let's play at our style. And uh, we did that tonight. That was one of the things going in uh, all year long. We're fast, we're physical, and uh, we have a real style about how we play. I thought that came out tonight. Coach, fast and physical. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Uh, couldn't be more uh, proud to be part of that unit that, that plays, you know, with an aggressive style. We talked about out hitting people in terms of how we want to affect the quarterback and even checking the ball down the way we want to tackle. Uh, we wanted to win with fundamentals. And uh, you know, our guys work really hard in that fashion. Uh, it's something that our coaching staff and the players, you know, we talk tackling, we talk turnovers really every day that we practice. And uh, you know, that sort of thing came out. What did you tell you? Well, we certainly have uh, you know, so much respect for their offense the way they did. So I was not surprised that we played well. Uh, we've had terrific weeks of practice and preparation. So going into it, we were healthy. And we really felt like we were going to play fast and physical. We, we prepared for no huddle for two weeks. And uh, to give those group of guys two weeks to prepare, uh, the coaches and those players, I think we're going to like the results. What did you tell your players after the game, coach? Really just how proud I was to be part of the unit. And uh, the thing that I was most impressed about is that we really played in a style and fashion that we're accustomed to. We're fast, we're physical, and we played this game on our terms. And that was one of the things we went into the game saying. And for us to go and play it in that way, uh, you know, and have it come true in that way, it was awesome. Where do the Seahawks rank the all-time greatest defense? I'll let you guys decide that. I you know, couldn't be more fired up to be part of our unit and the attitude and the way that we play. So I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. Coach Carroll has been, uh, he's been huge for my career. I think just um, how to feature the players and uh, let's find what a player can do well and let's accent that. And uh, that, that'll be one of the many things that he's taught me. What did that first front, you anticipate it would be that one side and like it was dominated their offensive I don't know about that, but I certainly know our guys know how to rush. And, uh, they know how to rush. Things we knew when you face a quarterback like him, you better be able to affect him. We didn't talk about sacks or hits. We talked about can we get him off the spot. And uh, we knew in certain coverages there was going to be times when he got the ball out and under 2.2, 2.3, which is hard for a rusher. We know sometimes it can be if it's at 2.6 or 2.7, that's when you can get the hit. So uh, we knew they'd have to deal with us, you know, in terms of you know, I was fired up for Clem and what he was able to do, and Cliff and Michael had been doing that for a while. So uh, it was just another example of how, you know, we have a really deep front. And some games you have to play real hard ball. It's going to be a running team. And then there's tonight games like tonight where it's going to be more future pass rush. What did that think several times? Peyton Manning several times audibled into a run. It like Bobby Wagner was nodding. He came back and made a signal. Do you guys know any of the calls and the signals? We did not. In fact, uh, some of our calls we just wanted to have some fun and we made we made up some calls just so we'd be able to do some too. <laughs> Fast and physical, and you can definitely say that defense is fast and physical. So here's what. Actually, and, and I missed this. I, I don't know how I missed it um, because this is key. This is key because I've always said that um, sometimes the things that you want, the aspirations that you have, career goals, when you get them, isn't what you really think it was going to be. Dan Quinn, defensive coordinator, built the Legion of Boom, Super Bowl winning you know, defensive coordinator, goes to Atlanta because that's the next progression, ends up getting Atlanta Close. Three quarters of the way, he's winning the Super Bowl. They have the epic meltdown against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. They lose. Um, and then he goes back to being the defensive coordinator. Mind you that a lot of people, when he was hired as a defensive coordinator, literally laughed. We're going to get that guy. He's a bum. You know you did. You know you did. Because, oh, that, oh, they, you're hiring a defensive coordinator who was the worst. Yeah. I can pull up the tapes. It, it, it never, hey, listen, what goes out of the internet is always on the internet. I can pull out the tapes. But he turned this defense around and has built a juggernaut. And the question you have to ask is, 
Are you a guy who wants to be a head coach? Because as a head coach, you're not really there making the sausage. You're putting the guys there to make the sausage. You're the guy that's having to deal with the owner and the media and everything else. Dan Quinn is working with the players and shaping the next generation. And there's been guys who have been great coordinators that aren't great head coaches. You can think about Wade Phillips, who's one of the most respected defensive coordinators in history, sucked as a head coach. So Dan Quinn being here has definitely made some incredible players, along with guys like Al Harris and things that have been here. You know when you're successful. You know when you're successful. Sorry, change the camera. People want to get you. And you can look at the Eagles and see the defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator that they wanted to get rid of. The Eagle fans like, oh, this guy's a bum. We need him out of here are begging to have those guys back because coaching matters. Dan Quinn will be a name that a lot of teams want to be a head coach. And I think that Dan Quinn, in order for him to be a head coach, I think it will need to be a special situation. Like maybe the Seahawk team. Pete Carroll retires. I could see Dan Quinn saying, I want to be there. Or maybe head coach of the Cowboys. What he said two days ago, um, makes me think that maybe I'm correct. For me, I had a big company where instead of actually doing the work, I'm directing, I'm doing the paperwork, I'm meeting with the owners and the buildings and, you know, doing all the minutia stuff. And I hate it. I am happier being at the red brick house, just working on that thing, getting my nails dirty and seeing it grow. That's me. And I'm hoping that maybe that's the case with Dan Quinn, that him being the great, great defensive coordinator that's building players that are off the chart. When you think about Diggs, you think about Bland, you think about Micah Parsons, getting those guys to elite levels that that's what he wants because that's what we need. This is his quote from him. I think it's important to know how to compartmentalize, Quinn said on Monday. Fortunately for me, in that space, any preparation you would do on that is done over the summertime. It's when the time gets called, I certainly will be ready to discuss that at a moment's notice. It's pretty easy these days to compartmentalize. Quite honestly, the guys I'm able to coach are big reasons why I wanted to be back here. So I'm not going to let a miss a moment of that. Yeah. Another part of that is I don't want anybody else to coach these guys. I think he has a true affection for Micah Parsons and D-Law and that group of guys and shaping them into a great defense. Because in the end, you're only as good as the coaches that are coaching the players. And if the Cowboys are able to make a deep playoff run, deep, 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 the difference will be Dan Quinn and what this defense has done. So, that being said, let's check out what the haters have to say on Get Up This Morning. It's comical to me because every week they've got a new knock on the Cowboys, okay? Now, here's, here's the latest one that you're going to get. Here's the talking point. I, I don't know if ESPN and Fox, they get their talking points. The new one they say is, well, the Cowboys haven't won a road game since November 19th, which was actually against Carolina, which is true, which is true. And that makes you think like, oh, my God, they uh, uh, November, we only played two road games, Buffalo and Miami. Buffalo, we got blown out. Okay, I'll give you that one. Miami, you had a chance. So it's two games. There's only two games. But that's the talking point. And, and see, this is what they do is – can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Exactly. 
So when you hear that, you're like, oh, my God, they, they just, just, oh, they're awful. Well, I'll remind you that the 2010 Green Bay Packers lost to Atlanta Falcons on the road, lost to the Chicago Bears on the road during the regular season where they were 3-5. and five. And they ended up winning as a wild card, six seed in Philadelphia, in Atlanta, in Chicago, on their way to Dallas to beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl. Four games on the road. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy who just broadcasts from his mama's basement. Let's listen to the haters. Finally, D. Woods Sunday Cowboys wrap up the two seed. If they beat Washington, what are you watching for? Man, well, the Cowboys blow this layup that the commanders <laughs> are about to get them right now. I mean, literally, the commanders might have more to play for by the draft position here. If you're the Cowboys, you cannot blow this game. It's your opportunity. You, you can't better not. You get the number two seed, have, have home, home playoff games. Come on, man. Don't screw this up. I don't want to talk about y'all this week like well, that. that. You bring up a really interesting point. We're going to dive into this. The Cowboys haven't won a game on the road since November 19th. There you go. Against Carolina. There you so go. So while we may look at this as a confidence builder or a layup, Micah Parsons isn't having any of that. But I don't even think it should be about confidence. We're a week away from playoffs. Um, I think I'm tired of learning and growing. It should just be about dominating and playing great football. There you go. So we played that soundbite in our meeting, and I looked right at you, and what did you say to me? I, what did I say to you? You said, I don't agree with that. <laughs> you said, I don't agree with that at all. You <laughs> said it angrily. You said it with great passion. I did. Very I, did. I, I, sla- I tend to slam my table I and slam the table about a lot of things. Yeah. No, like, 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 there's no, like, what, what, like, there's no momentum or, you know, anything that you get out of Commander. Hell, the Commanders, they got their U-Haul trucks, yeah. on, on, you know, running right now. So this whole thing, when, it, when we talk about the Dallas Cowboys, it's all about the postseason. Yeah. Like, this game means nothing to me but just a means to an end to win the division. They can't blow this, right? I mean, to D. Wood's point, that when we talk about what the commanders have at stake, if they lose this game, if Washington loses the game, they're almost definitely will get the second seed. There are strength of record tiebreakers that could yeah. actually screw that up. But for all intents and purposes, if Washington loses, they get the second pick in the draft. Yep. Cowboys win, they get the second seed in the NFC playoffs. This can't go the other way, can it? Win this one for Ron. You, uh, you never know. You never know what to we, Listen, you never know who's going to show up, right? Dude, those last games can be crazy. Because on one end, you got a team. I remember uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers had nothing to play for. They ran a – and we were going to the playoffs and we needed to win – and they went for a fake punt like they own 20. Like, it, it, guys will do anything. They can be reckless. And that's a, a dangerous team to play against sometimes, if you don't, especially if you don't get rid of them early on because they do have talent on this side of the ball. And when they're playing with no pressure on them, you, know, you never know. So, you know, stranger things have happened, Greeny, but Dallas should take care of business. Harry, they can't blow this, right? The Cowboys cannot lose this game, right? No, no, they can't because if they win this football game, they get the two seed. Right. The two seed means that you get to play at home, right? You get to play at home as long as you keep advancing until you get to the NFC Championship game. And if San Francisco keeps advancing, that's when you would play them in Santa Clara. Uh, also, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys, they're 8-0 at home. <laughs> they have 29 touchdowns and 21 field goals offensively, 50 scores, and only punted 17 times. So I think it's very significant that they win this game versus the Washington Commanders so they can get that number two seed so they're playing at home in the playoffs until you get to the NFC. Oh, it's everything. I mean, look, look, this was a gift. We talked about it yesterday, Kmart. Jerry Jones talked about it yesterday. I can't believe we're in this position, That's but I'm so happy. Yes, <laughs> That's yes. exactly what he it's said. It's like he took a shot at uh, Philly, too, though. That's what he said. I couldn't believe they lose that game. I'm sitting around watching. That I ball can't game. believe he always, it. He always includes that the ball word ball. Game. He always yes. calls it a ball game. <laughs> but, but the, so the point of it is this. So now they take their opportunity. And so the question then becomes, can the Cowboys capitalize? Capitalizing doesn't mean beating Washington tomorrow and getting the two seed. Capitalizing means for the first time in this millennium, when we get to the NFC Championship game, Dak and the Cowboys are one of the two teams standing. Is this team ready to do that? This team is good enough to do that. Whether they're ready to do that, I do not know. Mm. They have to show that. But the thing is, they have a good enough quarterback a very good number one wide receiver. Like, the way CeeDee Lamb is playing right now, for them <laughs> not to take advantage of the fact that the Eagles, I'm not saying they're done, but they seem to be free-falling and they haven't been able to figure out how to fix things. When you look yep. at the San Francisco 49ers, I understand they got pummeled by the 49ers, but 
That was a different Cowboys team then. Oh. So the Cowboys have everything in front of them, and all they have. The only thing that I worry about with the Cowboys are the Cowboys. That's it. They can beat anybody. This turned into a good conversation yesterday, and I want to, for those of you who are not with us, I want to catch you up on what we talked about. Because Je I brought up, can the Cowboys, exactly the same question. Can they take advantage of this gift, of this opportunity? The way they lost those two games down the stretch there, you would have thought, okay, that's it. They blew the division. They're going to go on the road. They're finished. And mm -hmm. then the Eagles hand them this gift, gift wrapped. Here's the two seed, Dallas, take it. The question then, and so I asked that question to Jeff Saturday. Are they ready to take that and run with it? He said, yes, they are, because they have the best quarterback in the NFC. So the question is, do they? No, I don't think they have the best quarterback. Of course I you don't. Think, I think they have the best quarterback. With I take Teddy Bridgewater over Dak Prescott. Stafford, by far, in my opinion, is the best quarterback. Matthew Stafford by far is the best yeah, quarterback. Yeah, Matthew in the NFC. Stafford's proven that he has what it takes to win in the playoffs. Like you talk about a team playing with house money, the scariest team in this playoffs from that side to me is Matthew Stafford because they can <coughs> run the football and they can play defense. They have a superstar that when you need a play, Look at they can one. get a play. <laughs> and that's a guy like Aaron Donald. Uh, when you need a stop, he's a guy that can wreck a game. And right now, you talk about Cooper Cup, you talk about Puka Nakua, they can put up points with the best of them, just ask the Baltimore Ravens. Nobody want to see them. So when you think about it, you know, Tampa will play Philadelphia Eagles. That's a much easier matchup. If the Rams go to Dallas, that could be upset City. How are City, you maintaining we're right your back. focus on this conversation? <laughs> this is our locker, locker mate. Yeah, that's yes. my, I know <laughs> things about him that only his wife knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yes. He's seen a lot of things. <laughs> yes, he's uh, seen a lot. Well, yes, I, I'm, in, I'm totally in agreement with Boyer. Matt Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford going into the postseason and on the NFC side, he is the best quarterback in the NFC. Oh. He's like over the last month plus, yeah. Matthew Stafford has been on a heater. Nobody like, wants that no, Nobody wants Matthew Stafford. It's like Bart said, he's the one that won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford's been playing, you know, been playing some great football. I know everyone will talk about the Giants last week, <coughs> but Matthew Stafford's been the most consistent guy with the match over, over the last month. All right, if we're looking at the five <coughs> quarterbacks who have already clinched playoff spots in the NFC. So this does not include Jordan Love, who's been playing great. It doesn't include any of the quarterbacks from the mm -hmm. NFC South because that hasn't been clinched. Of the five, Matthew Stafford has four playoff wins. He's four and three in his career. Dak is two and four. Goff is two and three. Hertz is two and two. Brock Purdy is two and one. Stafford's the only one who has won a Super Bowl. Who's the best quarterback right now? Who in your mind is the who best is? quarterback on the NFC side as we head into the playoffs? I'm going to go with Dak Prescott. Wow. And he's been the best quarterback in the NFC the entire year, in my opinion. And wow. that's the reason why he was in the MVP talks. And when you look at his numbers, first in touchdowns. But he's pass, not in the MVP third, anymore. Okay. Third in okay. pass yards, second in QBR, second in QB rating, sixth in completion percentage. And he only has eight interceptions, single-digit interceptions. So he's <laughs> taking care of the football. A lot of people thought that was going to be an issue coming into this season. Y'all over there laughing. Yeah, five that more coming games this season. Uh, uh, listen, you play who you play. Right, right. And, right. He, and he bust Matt Stafford in them ass early in the season, too. <laughs> er, in case y'all er, 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 It don't matter. You just say they play, you just say they play who they play, right? Early. You can't say they play who they play. Early. Then they, he, throw for, he throw for 300 against the Los Angeles Rams, and then you try to back him. Early in the season. Hey, no, no, no Cooper Cup. Early in the season, Puka Nakua still finding himself. You talk about it's not when. You, how you play is when you playing, and you talk about both. Oh. You talk about team. Oh, coaches. you talk about a Super Bowl winning coach on both sides, right? But you talk about one of the best play designers in all of football, with two guys that can run the top off a of defense and a guy that'll run and I'm, step on your chest. Let, let me tell you something. So let me see if I've got this right. Because we lost to the Cardinals. We got condemned all season long until the Eagles did. Now nobody talks about us losing to the Cardinals. We blow out the Rams, who are a playoff team, and it didn't matter because it was long ago. Did, did I get that right? Did I get that right? What? Seriously? Seriously. We beat the Rams. Oh, but that was early in the season. When all season long, they had pounded us over the head about the Cardinals game. Yeah, I got you. I got y'all. All right, good people. I've got to get to business. Got to get to work. Got lots to do. Got to get me about eight pork shoulders. Eight to barbecue for this weekend. I'm Mark Holmes, and I can't wait for this game. Peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. <sighs>
Thank you.